Hey, I'm Fred. And I'm Ed. And this is Create a Generation. Create a Generation of Hype. Not many people realize how much effort goes into making a great YouTube channel. So today's episode, we're going to chat to a range of top creators about their process in building out their channels, including musician Tom Thumb, who is a world champ beatboxer and composed the Creator Generation theme song. When I'm on the mic, pre create a generation of hype. Let's get into it. Kevin and I approach things very differently. Very often, I'll think something is a great idea. I look at it and, and just know this one's going to bang. It's going to be great. And then he looks at it and he's like, this sucks, man. This isn't going to work. <laughs> uh, and that explains the reasons why. And he's absolutely and totally right. You know, He's got this uh, creative approach to it where he's seeing how this is going to play out visually and, and kind of mentally. So you get this mix of the creative on his side and analytical on my side, and that balances, and mm. we kind of filter each other's best and worst ideas. So if we agree on something and we work out those kinks, what's left is, is probably going to be a decent, decent video. You know, they, they don't all uh, turn out that way, and some surprise you where people aren't very interested, and others surprise you where it blows up and you're like, well... I knew it was a good idea, but not that good. Mm. Um, yeah, but that's step one is that filtering process to figure out what the topic is going to be. And then it's, it's going through that, that whole process of presenting the thing. Uh, we found that we can't have more than like seven or eight seconds uh, where somebody's not getting hooked. And so it, you've got to find something that is at its core – an entertaining, surprising, interesting premise, but one that you can talk about consistently without it getting boring, without like a 90-second dry dead spell, and that you can do something with it visually so that people want to watch this video and not click away. So there are a lot of very good topics on paper that would make for excellent articles. People make great book chapters out of them. They make for terrible YouTube videos. Mm. And so step number one is us choosing a topic and talking about, uh, is this going to work? Can, can you call this something enticing enough for somebody to click on in the first place? Can you do something on camera, uh, demo this in such a way that it's going to play well? You're going to have people sticking around till the end. That's really, really hard. You know, I saw what other channels were doing with their content, and I tried to avoid a lot of those mistakes. So, um, you know, gaming channels, it's like, I, I, I think that in 2019, you can still start up a new gaming channel and grow really fast and be really big, but not if you're doing exactly the same thing that every other gaming channel is doing. So things they would do is like, okay, well, here's my long form version of me playing whatever, Metal Gear Solid, and then they'll just go, oh, yeah, cool, I'm going to commentary in front of a video and and, um, and do that for three hours and then upload it with no editing. And it's like, well, I, I knew something like that would never work. Um, instead, it's it's got to be about respecting the viewer's time. There is such a, a huge volume of, essentially an infinite volume um, of alternative content that people could be spending their time viewing. So cut it down, refine it down. And one of the reasons it grew so fast is because very quickly I had a catalog up of content that didn't waste the, the viewer's time. When you committed to going hard at this straight away, what sort of crazy hours are we talking? Oh, well, including some of the sort of contract work I had to do at the side. It was basically just every hour of the day that I wasn't sleeping. So it was like 16 hours a day, every day, for sort of weeks on end. Um, and it was like, it was super unhealthy. And then um, gradually I've sort of tapered that down. And, and I've got a pretty, pretty healthy schedule now, but in 15 those, and a half hours a day. <laughs> yeah, something <laughs> like that. But in, yeah, in those, in those first few days, um, I think that was, that was pretty important, that, that initial grind. Um, yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd take sort of half a day off here and there, but but basically for that first six months, I must have been working regularly, seventy to eighty hours a week. Yeah, so um, for the for the first eighteen months, um, I was working at home, and um, after about a year, I decided to to pull someone else onto the 
um, the team because the, the workload was getting too big and wanted to be able to produce more videos more quickly. Um, so I just had them coming around to my house and um, it became uh, not, not a very good situation because it was like, oh, you know, someone was constantly in your house and and um, working from home uh, is, is not a great idea if you can avoid it because um, you end up working hours that you shouldn't really and it's like, you know, you try to... Yeah, relax, unwind, watch some television and you can see the computer over there and all your responsibilities and things you should be doing but aren't. And, you you know, you, um, so I, I decided to put a bit of distance um, uh, between me and that and um, I had a chat with my mate and, and he got me a good deal on um, an office um, sort of halfway across the city. So, so I commute... Um, there every day and and work from there and and try to keep uh, you know something something close to a a regular job schedule. No. I, I will say though, in terms of some some more practical advice, um, uh, other than so, wear pants, other than than wear pants, certainly do get dressed. That helps a lot, and and getting into a routine. That's it's really hard not to break that routine when you're working from home, and you find all sorts of procrastinations that you you shouldn't. So. You know, you start changing your priorities. Like, oh, the house really needs cleaning, and you know, this sort of stuff that you never would have done anyway, except that you're just putting off work. But um, one thing that really helps, especially with um, YouTube, is because you're usually working on the same computer that, say, you um, unwind with. Um, it's best to. Um, I mean, like gaming and stuff. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, so what you actually want to do is is create like a, a delineation between um, the the gaming side of your computer and the and the work side of your computer. So, I I found this it actually massively increased my productivity when, for example, I opened up Google Chrome or Firefox, and my book ta- uh, my bookmarks all weren't related to the stuff that I do in my off hours rather than like all work stuff when it's there and it's like, this is your email. This is the work stuff, uh, work links that you need. This is the stuff for the current project. You're actually much more likely to get into work and just having your work in front of you. And, and I would suggest the same thing with like all your desktop icons, put them in two folders, have one for work and one for, you know, uh, uh, relaxing and then don't mix the two. Yeah. Good tip. Usually it takes about four to five weeks to make a video, um, but these things vary so much. Like the hours, if you break it down, like if you break down a video, if you think about like even just coming up with the title and the thumbnail, it could be like two hours because you play around with things. I do searches on Google to see what's what's tracking, what's doing well, what are other key phrases people are using. You know, is it bright colors people like? What, how about this thumbnail? Like Sean and I, my husband who helps with the channel, go back and forth over these things till we hate it you know you're like i don't want to hear about that anymore and so that's just that not to mention the hours of research and writing that i do to make sure that what i say is is fact is like actually what's happened or is how we diagnose and i didn't misspeak and say one week when it's two weeks because i'm a human and oops um so there's a lot of that and then the editing process can take a few hours so each video if it's a, a pretty easy edit and an easy like research thing from me, meaning that I already kind of have an idea, but I just have to like fact check some things. It at minimum we're th- we're talking like ten hours, and that's just one. And if you do that twice a week, that's half of your week just to create two videos. And, and so the streamers also like they have to do it live. Like I think that's the thing that that is really difficult for people like Ninja or um, any gamer out there is that people want them live doing it, and they watch, and that's how they make money. So it's like you don't make money if you're not actually actively working. Mm. And for anybody who's like in the regular, non YouTube, non creative space, like I want that to sink in that like you don't if you take vacations, you don't get paid. Like I know as a therapist, I already do that. Like if I'm not seeing a patient and not getting paid for that hour from that patient, I'm not getting paid. Mm. Um, but if you work in a big organization, you have sick days, you have vacation days, and you get time off. And so I think more and more on YouTube, even personally, um, we've been talking about burnout. Mm. And I think that's a really important, it happens to everybody from stay-at-home moms to engineers to you know truck drivers to everybody. I believe it's a myth that you can't take breaks, that your audience will still be there for you. Um, 
and YouTube, I've been talking with them a lot about creator burnout because they're very concerned and what's their role and how do they help. And I think, yes, it takes a lot of work, but we can't be afraid to take breaks. And it's almost necessary because I don't know about you guys, but like when you finally get a really good vacation, you come back energized. Yeah. I mean, I think there's a couple of things. There's like logistical things from like getting a team if you can afford it. Um, whether that's someone that helps you write scripts or edit or even just an assistant that helps uh, scheduling. That's been huge for me um, just because trying to remember to put things in a calendar and get back to everybody and say, yes, I'm available or no, or is takes up so much of my day. Um, and so I think logistically a team is helpful if you can. And I know a lot of creators out there are like, Hey, I'm barely making ends meet. That's because I was that way for years. So I know what that's like. And I think, the next is like finding small ways you can work smarter, not harder. Mm -hmm. Like whether that is uh, breaking up your days from like email management for this amount of time, like only an hour, then creative work when you're feeling your best. Everybody knows what their best time of day is. So if you aren't a morning person like me, like I hate the mornings. <laughs> um, and so if you aren't, then maybe your creative time is like noon to three or something like that. And so breaking up your day in chunks so that you know this this is when you're doing this, this is when you're doing that, and you can shift gears and get hopefully more done. Um, but also I think as far as like the, the need to feed the beast, I think it's like knowing that you can have real conversations with your audience and let them know. And as long as you communicate that and you feel authentic about what you're creating and you're excited about it, they're gonna be that way too. And if that takes two weeks to come out or a month, or if that means you you produce like eight videos and then you go dark for five months, as long as you let them know why that is and what's going on um, and you're still stoked about what you're making, I think all of that will come through and it will be really well received and it won't be, we, we as creators won't feel so burnt out and our audience won't wonder where you went, you know? Sure. And especially like YouTube has other ways to interact with an audience like uh, the community tab, YouTube stories. There's definitely ways to keep your audience engaged with you knowing you're still there even if there's just a little story while you sit at your computer and edit. It definitely doesn't take as much time when you do live stream. Um, it's great because you can be spontaneous with it. Um, that's kind of the beauty of it. It's not very planned. You have a general idea of what you'd like to do and then they can control it as well. So if they say, oh, you know, move the camera over here, we'd actually really like to see you um, pipe I don't know, like a board with a 1M tip so you can bring out the 1M tip. And it's really great. Like there's a lot of room for shaping it to what the people want as well and compared to how does live stream perform though uh, compared to your normal videos does live stream perform worse than your other videos or does it perform better or how does it go compared to the other ones going off the views that i've seen on my live stream videos compared to my pre uh, recorded videos live streams actually do better they might not wow. be like that for everybody but for me for some reason they actually do better than my pre-recorded ones last year we did 13 original music videos the year before it was 16 um so you know we generally try for one a month or more if we can do that but we will not put out a video until we think it's ready mm. because for us in preschool content we're trying to make a video that will be re-watchable every day for a year so it's not about the frequency of the video it's about the the quality of the video and, and how well that's going to resonate with kids. So we'll spend the time on it that it needs. So we, you know, it takes us three to four months to, to work on one video. Um, they usually roll off the end of the production line about one a month, but each video is, is going through um, the production process for about four months. Yeah. So to fill the gaps, we often do, we might do a live, we've been trying to do live videos sometimes on location and they sometimes they're hit and miss. Sometimes they're good and sometimes they're bad. Um, then we'll do other videos where we um, take content from the website and turn that into a video. Um, I, actually, let's use the USA trip as a good example because it is a good one. So we already have the itinerary. So I go through it and break it down based on time and activities. So I'll look at what they've got and I'll go, all right, we're going to be in Tennessee for two nights. Is that long enough to make a video, a good quality 20 minute length video? Yes. Okay, let's do that. Then we'll group North Carolina and South Carolina together and then we'll make a Georgia video. We break them down and that way we try and get as many videos as we can out of that trip to cover us for one when we're away traveling. And in addition to those on the road kind of travel videos, then we will do some to camera pieces at home where we condense just the information. So they're like our real travel tip videos. Man, I, I just go out into nature for sure. That's like... I find the most inspiration in absolute silence. 
because I'm so always surrounded by noise, like this cacophony of kind of ideas and sounds and different like musical inspirations. And sometimes it's really kind of hard to pan it all out and find that little nugget of gold inspiration. So sometimes just distance and just total silence, reconnecting with nature. I often go for like overnight hikes or like go camping or just do some gardening. It's like for sure the most the easiest way for me to regain my inspiration to make music well i mean i don't think there's any general time um you know like for like those little minute long ones usually i it takes me about two or three days only because i have to record everything compose everything mix everything shoot everything edit everything then do all the graphics Mm. so it's not like it's it's not just the process of pointing a camera at myself, filming it and uploading. It's like mm. a very, from start to finish, the creative process begins and ends with me. So that's kind of generally like how I work. But I, for sure, about 80% of the songs I write or the things I create never see the light of day. Right. Just because I, I'm always thinking like, oh, you're only as good as your last video, which is a sometimes a terrible mantra to have because you just second guess everything you're like it's not as good as this one that's got 70 million views how do i top that yeah it's very stifling sometimes what would make make you throw out a out a a clip or video or or song you don't like uh giving it distance and then coming back to it and still not liking it Mm. that's like if there's like um so for example i did a video the other day that I shot in my media room, just um, two camera shoot, and it was a, a live take of a loop station thing, and there was just one note in there in the loop that was a few cents off, like from being perfectly pitched, and hearing it just rotate and rotate and rotate, it just gave like made me so angry. So I was like, "See ya." Yeah. So it's stuff like that, just like things that. If I can't watch that video back and enjoy it myself, yeah. then usually it, I won't release it. That's kind of the litmus test. I, I think uh, when you're practicing every time, I don't know, something, anything. Uh, for example, for me, I learn all the basics. And with that, um, I could sometimes imagine, I don't know, something, what I wanted to do. And some other times just seeing uh, different pictures on Facebook, on Pinterest, and some of the followers as well, they were sending um, different pictures. Marcela, do this, teach us to do that. And so we get inspired by all of that. And it has been so good because uh, we even have inspired many people as well. They um, have told me, and it's awesome. They as well, they have YouTube channels, they have new accounts, and is nice. The Beauty News episode, it's generally... At a, least an hour long. About an hour long. At, and, on average over a year. And yep. we do have to research, like, um, we look for the new releases. release stuff. Yep. So we, you know, scour, you know, Instagram and all that kind of stuff every day. We do it every day. And then, um, you know, we will sit down and we will... We film it? This, film it. We'll, we did it this morning. Editing takes a long time you actually have to like edit the photos to be the right size and we might have i think today we had 165 photos don't tell me she's doing (laughs) it tomorrow's tomorrow's problem um and then just editing down like two hours of footage into maybe an hour or just under and then layering over videos or photos um it takes me probably anywhere from if it's a if it's a quick episode, maybe four or five hours. If it's a long one, more like sometimes eight hours. So we like to say that, you know, with everything that we do for a beauty news episode, which is our Friday, just our Friday videos, it's at least twenty to twenty five hours of work. Combined. That well no, we yeah. we you know, like, we, we share the load. Yeah, yeah. But it's about that's how many hour, man hours it takes to create easy. I have to take care of the baby and when she's asleep is when I do my work. Because if I do it with her awake, she will destroy my content. <laughs> like she will make noises in it and I don't want that. So I pretty much work when she's asleep and I have to work around her, which is what most um, work at home moms do. But luckily I've got like my in-laws here now, which are going to be taking care of her so I can work on my new project a lot more. But when I was alone for the past few months, I pretty much just had to work around it. So 
sometimes I was filming at one or two a.m. at night, really? just because that was the only time I could get to myself. Wow. Um, and editing as well. I do it when she's asleep at night because that's because I need the time to sit and think about it. And for just for me to stay consistent, I've recorded at least one or two months in advance. So oh. everything's like scheduled. Create a generation of hype.